Hello Linux fans, Rob here. Welcome to Linux Quest. And I've got a video for you today that's um, I'm going to try to combine the request of two different Linux Quest viewers. Uh, one request was, um, hey, do you really like um, Antergos with GNOME desktop environment as much as you said, uh, or are you just building it up for the video? Uh, so I answered that question, but I, it kind of gave me a moment to pause, and I decided to go back and take another look at it. So I jumped the fence and, uh, you know, in search of those greener pastures on the other side, and uh, at, at any rate, have installed uh, Antergos GNOME Desktop Edition. And I'm going to go through and cover some things that will address another viewer request, which was, hey, could you go through the theming process for icons wallpapers, um, you know, and, and that kind of thing. So I'm going to combine those two to address Antergos and uh, the GNOME desktop environment as well as the theming process. So we're going to start first with the theming process. And so in order to kind of lay this out as best I can, I put it back to pretty much generic uh, stock look from as far as uh, an Antergos install is concerned. So if you're installing this through um, you know some other distribution be it Ubuntu based or Fedora based or something like that um, your theme out of the box is going to look different than what you see here. This happens to be an Antergos uh, wallpaper here with the default icon themes as far as uh, GNOME or GNOME and I'm going to bounce back and forth on this too. GNOME or GNOME is concerned. So First, we'll step through the theming process, and one of the very first things you're going to want to do, or, or that I do uh, within the GNOME environment, is I install, if it's not already pre-installed, in the case of Antergos, it's pre-installed, the GNOME Tweak Tool, or simply called the Tweak Tool. And the reason for that is this gives you the ability to go in and adjust things such as appearance, desktop, extensions. We're going to talk uh, quite a bit about extensions, fonts, keyboard and mouse commands, uh, the power, startup applications, the top bar here, uh, typing, windows and workspaces. So lots of control here under the uh, tweak tool. The very first thing we'll uh, jump to is appearance here. And as you see, uh, you've got some options here for global dark theme. I'm going to leave that off for now. Now I have pre-installed uh, several icon packs and GTK themes uh, as we step through this. And there are multiple ways to um, to obtain the themes, the icon themes, cursor themes, shell extensions, things like that. Uh, you can do that through, uh, in this case, you could do that through the uh, Pamac software installer for Antergos. And uh, if you have the AUR on, you'll find a larger selection that's the arch user repository you'll find a much larger selection of icon packs and everything through the AUR for me that's the easiest way to uh, to install that uh, or to install the the various themes uh, if you are running Ubuntu or Fedora or something like that um, you may you could well possibly install those through a PPA um, or you could install through the terminal or you could install from GNOME Look, which is a, a website listing that. And I'll pull up that website so um, in case you're not familiar with that. All right, so I've pre-installed some various icon packs. So the first thing I'm going to do is change the uh, GTK theme. And I installed a theme called Paper. Now, I like Paper. It's a flat look, uh, kind of the material look, if you will, uh, familiar to you if you're running Android. A current version of Android, you'll be familiar with that. And I know a lot of people are, are tired of the flat look. Um, I, I like it. I, I bounce back and forth. So anyway, uh, by default, you'll see Numix uh, pre-installed. Uh, if you um, install Antergos, you'll see Numix. So we're going to go ahead and I'll just show you what Numix looks like. You won't see a lot of change there until I reboot. But, um, well, I haven't changed the icons yet. But in the case of Antergos, let's go to Numix. And you'll see there, that is the Numix look. And that's what you'll see um, as you first boot into Antergos GNOME Edition. That would not be what you see if you were to boot into, say, Fedora or a um, community edition of Ubuntu or something like that running GNOME. 
All right, so I'm going to switch back over to paper. That's one I installed. And you'll notice here that the title bar and everything changes uh, color and appearance. And then for the icon theme, I'm also going to choose paper. Now I've installed Vibrancy. That's a great icon pack. If you, um, if you get a chance, just search out Vibrancy and um, you'll see that icon. And they also have Vivacious. And then I also installed the, um, the Breeze icon pack. And so we're going to change that over. Then Cursor, we'll change that over to paper as well. And then under the shell theme, we'll change that to paper. So now I've got everything uh, changed over to paper. You'll notice the icons have changed. Um, you'll notice the title bar and things like that have changed. And so now that we've got all of that in place, I'm going to move over to the desktop. Now by default, you'll see uh, if the desktop is turned on, you'll see home and trash listed. And I've turned those off, and I only leave only leave mounted volumes checked. Um, that way, if I insert a USB flash drive or something, the icon will pop up on the desktop. All right, so we're going to leave it there for now, and I'm going to minimize this. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the background or the wallpaper. So I'm going to right-click on the desktop and go to Change Background. And from there you have two choices. You can change the background, which is what we're looking at here, or the lock screen background. So uh, we'll click on that. And uh, you see a pretty nice list of wallpapers in Antergos. Uh, there's one here that I was looking at earlier. Let me see if I can find that again. That was absolutely beautiful. Uh, there it is. So in this case, you can see how attractive that is. Just not sure where that is, but that's beautiful. Um, so let's go back to uh, tweak, or I'm, I'm sorry, let's go back to wallpaper again. Get myself in line here, and I'm actually going to install a material wallpaper. I like that look. I've used this wallpaper in the past. And then for the lock screen, we'll go in and choose the other wallpaper with the waterfalls. And so now that's applied, so we can close out there. Now the next thing that I do is I go in and I um, change the dash to dock settings. And that's something, again, if it's not pre-installed as it is within Antergos, or Antergos, <laughs> I don't know why I struggle with that. We're going to go to dash to dock settings. And now I'm going to change the uh, placement of this uh, plank here if you will. And dash to dock settings gives you options for position and size, behavior, appearance, things like that. So here we have it to the left. I'm simply going to choose bottom. And uh, you could go top or right. Now in this case having it at the top doesn't really work here because it covers the gnome bar that's at the top which really you can't do much with. Um, and then you have an option here for auto hide. Now auto hide, I think um, you'll want to go with auto hide because if you launch into um, you know, your browser or something like that, you want it to be full screen in most cases. And with auto hide, it'll still pop up. And then you can go in and you can set the dock size limit or you can change it to panel mode. If you go to panel mode, it becomes one large panel at the bottom. I'm going to keep it there on dock mode. Um, and then you have some options for the icon size. So we could increase those. And they maintain their look. Um, you know, the ratios and everything on the icons stay very nice. You know, everything's intact. So I'm going to bump that back down a little there. Don't want to get too large. And um, once you've got that all set, then you can go to behavior. And from there, you can choose Show Favorite Applications. And so as we go through and set applications, I set those as favorites, and then they pop up here on the bar. And I'll kind of step into that in just a minute. Uh, you can show running applications, and those will show up here, as you see, with the uh, GNOME Shell preferences. That's one of the running applications. So if you had another window open, you could, you could pop up there, or you could still open it from the uh, dock settings here at the bottom. Uh, move the applications button at the beginning of the dock and that's this button here that'll launch you into full screen applications. Um, I don't use that and I'll show you through an extension what I use and how I set it up. 
and then animate show application so you can toggle that on or off if you have a system that's you know maybe it's a really old system and you just don't have a lot of resources for animations uh, you could toggle that off and then you could switch workspaces by scrolling on the dock so um, we could come down here and, and scroll see that I'm just scrolling my mouse wheel and uh, so once we've got that set we'll go over to appearance and now I'm gonna toggle on use built-in theme and you'll see as I did that it changed the uh, dock color I'm gonna go back you can shrink the dash so I'm gonna show you what that looks like before and after so I like shrink the dash there's just too much border around it otherwise you can show window counter indicators and I have that turned on as well uh, there'll be a dot here so if you have multiple windows open within that application you'll see more than one dot you could also customize the dash color so you could go in and set the background for the dash actually I need to turn that off and then you could customize um, the opacity or opacity and I'm gonna bump that up to 100% or toggle that off and now you no longer see through the uh, through the dock alright actually let me go back and turn that on just to make a fine-tune adjustment there actually looks a little better with a little transparency in place there we go and that's it so uh, once you've got dash to dock settings in place um, you know you've changed your theme you've got your your dock settings in place here you've got everything set up at the bar this is the full screen menu launcher um, you get a good look at the icons this way and I really think the paper icons they're flat you either like the flat icons or you don't I think um, you know it's a professional look reminiscent of Android but still I like it so the next thing that that I'll do there is I'll go back into tweak tool and now we're going to work with extensions so you can think of extensions as uh, somewhat like widgets or um, additional controls maybe that's a good way to describe it and one of the appealing things about GNOME is that the community behind the extensions continues to grow and there's some really slick um, you know smart innovative extensions in place now you can get extensions a couple of different ways um, if you're in the uh, GNOME, GNOME tweak tool you can go to get more extensions and then that'll launch your browser into the GNOME shell extensions and then from there you can go in and choose based on the description so I have application menu user themes uh, and I'll go through and toggle on the ones that I use that you know that are also popular I think um, you'll find that they're listed in the uh, most popular so you can sort by popularity recent downloads things like that um, you may have to install the gnome shell integration into the browser so if you go into uh, Chrome or Chromium for example you could go into settings and then from there you go to extensions and you'll search for GNOME shell integration and then what that does once that's installed and in place it will then allow you with one click to um, to add an extension it's really that easy so I'm gonna f I'm gonna actually let's see here workplace indicator so you can see here that's toggled off there's a simple switch there uh, I'm gonna go ahead and toggle that on and now you see that extension in place now it looks like some of my <laughs> extensions have already turned themselves on and I'm not sure how they did that but we'll toggle them off and then come back on so that you can see how that works so it's that easy I simply toggled that to on and and now that extensions in place um, giving me the ability to switch from workspace one to workspace two alright so we're going to close this out we'll go back into the extensions and I'm gonna just make sure let's see here well that's odd why those have turned themselves on but yet they're not on hmm that's kind of odd alright so I'm gonna to toggle these on only to turn them back off and let's see here what else have we got uh, workspace indicator is on 
places indicator, open weather, all of those are on. So the extensions that I like the most so far, and there are a ton of extensions to explore, so um, that's part of the fun of setting this up, is number one, applications menu. With that toggled on, now I have a more conventional drop-down list with categories on the left for the various applications. I prefer that over the full screen application launcher. Now, if I were using a touchscreen device, I may go with the full screen application launcher over this, and in that case, I would simply toggle this, uh, toggle this off. You can still go into Activities Overview, which is what would be in the place of where the Applications drop-down is, simply by clicking on Activities at the bottom. And now you can see everything that's open with your uh, other desktop environments. All right, so we're going to go back to this activity. The other um, extension that I like is called Places. So um, it's alphabetical, so I've toggled on the Places indicator. And this, is kind of, this setup here is kind of like Mate or Mate, in, in that you've got application list, and then you've got places. And with Mate, you'd have one more called system. We don't have that in this case, but there, there may be an extension for it. All right, so under places, that's going to give me quick access to home, desktop, documents. Um, so I could launch right into, you know, downloads, for example. Um, well, here's Swag Arch. That's one I'm going to be uh, checking out here soon. Look forward to that. But you can see how quickly, and again, here you can see the theming in place with the title bar here uh, with the paper uh, color in place. All right, so those two extensions I always set up. Now, sometimes I'll put a weather extension here, and um, this one happens to be my favorite so far, and there are several to choose from. This is open weather, um, you know, and it kind of matches with the the rest of the theme. Um, it matches the the top panel for sure, uh, but it's got a nice look to it. All right, we'll move on down here. The other extension that's important to put in place is user themes. So you can load shell themes from the user directory. That way if you install a, um, a shell theme, or you excuse me, you download a shell theme, this gives you the ability to then go in and install it from whatever directory you saved it in. And then here we have Workspace Indicator. I'm actually going to toggle that one off. I don't really need that. And that's it for now. Uh, nope, I back up on that. The other one that I like is called Caffeine. Um, and you'll find Caffeine um, is something that a lot of people use within GNOME because what that'll do will allow you to toggle on or off or disable the auto suspend and screensaver. So caffeine works very well. And then I found another one here that I really like. Uh, just discovered today, as a matter of fact, and it's called Internet Radio. It's a great extension that um, allows you to add channels, um, set up favorites. The hard part is finding the actual um, stream address. I may do a separate video on just how you go about finding the different radio streams. Uh, because they hide them, there is a way to find it. I may do a separate video on that for those of you who uh, enjoy internet radio and, and you don't want to do it through the browser. So this uh, extension allows you to go in and uh, set up different channels and, uh, and just play with one click. So that's extremely nice. Alright, so that's it for extensions. And, uh, you know, for now, uh, that's all I've done to really go in and customize this and give it a completely different look from the default. Now if you're working with say Fedora you'll find that the GNOME desktop environment is about as generic as you're gonna find. Um, I equate Fedora and the generic GNOME desktop as I would to say OpenSUSE and the blandness of the KDE desktop if you install that. So um, these are some steps that you can take to go in and customize it and give it a unique look and I think a much better look than the default themes and icons that you see. The extensions are icing on the cake as far as I'm concerned. They really add a lot of function and usability and fun uh, to the desktop environment and hey I'm all about that so um, and I know many of you out there probably have some favorite extensions and some good suggestions for extensions so please share those um, you know I'm sure that there's some stuff out there that's extremely cool 
Uh, it's just a matter of finding it. So uh, please share that in the video comments. Now the other things that you could go in and customize at this point would be um, the fonts. So you could go in and adjust that uh, from window titles, interface documents, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, you could scale up or scale down. I have a high resolution uh, monitor on my laptop and so sometimes I use the scaling factor here and it seems to work really well within uh, GNOME. Um, the, the scaling seems to work better than I find in Mate or XFCE or well, it's probably on par with KDE I'm gonna say. And then you have keyboard and mouse so you could go in and uh, make adjustments here. You know everything from uh, switch between overview and desktop so you could left click with the super key or windows key for your overview and and that kind of thing so you can go in and make adjustments there uh, power settings what to do when the buttons pressed um, and then don't suspend on lid close this one is good because um, and that should have been on actually because if you're using an external monitor with a laptop for example uh, and you choose to close the lid on the laptop, you don't want it to suspend. Uh, you can go in and set up your uh, startup applications, add and remove those. Now here you have some adjustments with the top bar. You, you don't get a lot. Um, here we've got show application menu, uh, show the date, show the week numbers, things like that. Under typing you can go in and choose um, some options there for, for typing. There are people I know that really get into um, the behavior and everything of the keyboard. Then under Windows you can see the window activation key here is the super key. You've got some options there for uh, resizing and things like that on secondary click. Uh, double click, middle click, secondary click, things like that. And then workspaces. So here we have it set to dynamic and uh, you could go in and change that to static and then you could add and remove the number of, of uh, workspaces that that you you know that you need let me take that back to dynamic hopefully that didn't change anything <laughs> too much I saw it blip off and I thought oh no my recording so once you get through a few basic things here and just kind of feel your way around it'll take you no time to really be able to go in and give the GNOME desktop not only you know a unique look that that fits you and, and suits you but you'll also be able to add some cool extensions and things like that. All right, so I'm going to move on to the next question, which was, do I really believe that the GNOME desktop is, is that good within Antergas? And my answer is yes. And I've actually gone back and I've reinstalled this on my main system. And... After going through and adding the extensions and, and doing some theming and that kind of thing, what I have found is, is that GNOME is actually really starting to, I think, make some strides with some of their revisions. And let's go into, uh, let's see here, let me find, let's see, I think it's in settings, and let's go to details. This is version 3.22.2. Now, I haven't gone back and read what all changes have taken place with uh, the last couple of versions. But what my conclusion is, is this seems to run extremely fast. Faster than, say, trying GNOME six months ago uh, through a non-Arch-based distro. And so my experience with GNOME running on Antergas has been really great. It's been the best GNOME experience I've had, and I'm going to hold to that and stick to that. And to kind of prove it out, I'm going to actually wind up spending more time with it. Um, more than likely, I, you know, I, I've installed this on another partition. I still have uh, Manjaro Mate installed, but, you know, here I'm jumping in and the font rendering is so much better than uh, Manjaro Mate or Manjaro period. Um, the font rendering is, is great here. And so that's one of those little details that's hard for me to get past. Um, and it just seems to run faster. It could be that it's a newer version. Uh, you know, time will tell on the stability, but I can tell you from the standpoint of, of Antergos KDE, 
it was extremely stable. So uh, we'll see how this goes. Um, you know, I'm missing KDE less with GNOME than I actually am with Mate, which is surprising to me. But um, we'll see here after some time. So hopefully that answers both questions. And hopefully you were able to see here with the uh, GNOME desktop how you can easily go in and do some theming and set it up and get some extensions. And again, I uh, encourage you to share those extensions. I think that would be fun for people who are using this desktop environment to get in and explore with those new new extensions and add some maybe uh, add some new life to the uh, desktop environment. So, hope this helps. Thanks for watching, and we will check you later.